In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. The kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Praise the Father. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. And now this gospel truth of old shall not feel, shall not faint. For by his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who was resurrected, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We welcome you to this Easter Sunday live stream in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. A special welcome to those who may not be members of Holy Spirit, but are joining us online. We hope that one day you will be able to join us in person. For those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Nathan Allen, and off camera is Pastor Cassie Todd, as well as our music director, 
Frank Pitts. If anyone has any prayer concerns, we invite you to email those to prayer at holyspiritlc.net. We continue to thank everyone for your financial support. You can continue to give electronically through the church website or by mailing checks to the church. This week, we are also thankful for additional groceries that were able to be supplied to those in need in the community. Thank you to all who are generous in this difficult time. We encourage you to continue to check the church website and our Facebook page and YouTube channel for updates on a regular basis. We also encourage you to use the Easter evening worship that was shared electronically on the um, weekend update that was shared on Friday. Uh, you can use that this evening as part of your Easter dinner celebrations uh, to have a time of remembrance and recalling that first Easter evening as the disciples journeyed to Emmaus and saw the risen Lord among them. Also, similar to what we did for Palm Sunday, we invite you to record yourselves saying, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia, and email that to me. Please don't text, just email it to me by Wednesday of this week. We would like to make a similar video and include that in our services for the weeks ahead. At this time, I invite you to uh, prepare your hearts with a time of confession and forgiveness in our Easter litany. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The, the tomb, tomb is dark, dark but, but empty. empty. The one you are looking for has overcome the darkness. The, the stone, stone has, has been, been rolled, rolled away. away. The one you are looking for has overcome death. The, the one, one we are looking for is alive. Let us pray. Living God, may we hear anew this story, story and marvel at what it means. May we find new wonder in the good news of Christ's resurrection. Forgive us when we fail to live into the message of hope and salvation, the promise of eternal life. Make us alive in Christ, O oh God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, trust in the promise that because he lives, you also shall live. Your sins are forgiven. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and and forever. Amen. Amen.
Well, good morning, children. Are you in a place where you can see pretty well? If you are not, I invite you to get a little closer, like I'm getting a little closer to the screen so that you can see. Happy Easter to you. Did you get a chance to do an Easter egg hunt? Well, if you haven't, guess what? You can go on our Facebook page and I have an Easter egg hunt of all sorts of eggs I hid around the church and took pictures of that you can find. Speaking of Easter eggs, we've been reading a story about Easter eggs, haven't we? The Easter story egg. And guess what? Today is the last day of the story, and I'm going to read it to you. And here it is. Easter Sunday. As the new day was dawning, the trees began to sway. An angel of the Lord appeared and rolled the stone away. Friends went to visit his tomb. They brought burial spices of plenty. But when they arrived at the cave, they discovered his grave was empty. When his friends entered the tomb, they found burial cloths of linen. He had done just as he had promised. Yes, Jesus had risen. Jesus died for our sins. He paid the ultimate price. Now his kingdom is our present. He has given us eternal life. That heavy rock couldn't hold him. Jesus needed to be free. He conquered death to save us, to save both you and me. Look at the picture. Look at that. Can you see? Can you see the tomb and that the tomb is empty? Well, we have another page. Oh, you know, we are reading the story about the Easter egg, and I realize I don't have the Easter egg with me. Do you see it? Do you see where it went? It's in the flowers, and these ones over here? Nope. Oh, look it. There it is. There it is, our very last Easter egg from our Easter story. Hmm. I wonder what's in it. I don't hear anything. Let's open it. Let's see. It's empty. There's nothing in it. I wonder why. Let's keep reading our story. Maybe it'll tell us. Yes, it will. Listen. Let this empty egg remind you of the tomb that was found bare, 
although his body is gone, he can be found everywhere. He is in the booming flower, the blooming flowers and the emerging butterflies. He is in each and every raindrop and the clouds up in the sky. Easter is Jesus, raised from the dead. He is our hope and our joy, our life's daily bread. Jesus arose from the grave. To him be glorified, for Jesus has arisen. Yes, Jesus is alive. See, the cross is empty, and there's butterflies. Those help us to remind us that Jesus rose from the dead. Let's pray about that. Fold your hands, close your eyes, and pray with me. Because just like this egg that's empty, the tomb is empty today, and that's good news. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so grateful that you rose from the dead. That is such great news. Help us rejoice on this Easter in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Our first reading today is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. And the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from Colossians 3, verses 1 to 4. If you have been raised with Christ, seek things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to the 20th chapter of John. Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, 
and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And he said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, Rabboni, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. I recently heard a story from one of my colleagues in Virginia, Pastor Phil Martin. He and another pastor decided to go out for a beer after a long Wednesday. So they went to a local brewery, and after parking his car on the street, Pastor Phil peered into the window of the brewery to see if it was still open. To his surprise, he saw a familiar face and turned to his colleague, who was just a few steps behind him, and said, It looks like they're still open, but Jesus is in there. Thinking that this must be some theological commentary about the fact that Jesus liked to hang out where people were, the other pastor chuckled and said, I know, I know, Jesus is everywhere. No, really. Jesus is in the bar. So they walked into the brewery, and sure enough, there was a guy wearing a crown of thorns, a white tunic with a scarlet robe draped over it. It appeared that he was leading some group game uh, or activity of some kind. But when Jesus saw these two men who looked like priests with clerical collars on walking toward him, he was the one who looked like a ghost. Several minutes later, after he had finished his game-leading responsibilities, the man immediately took off his costume and slid over to where the two pastors were. He quietly apologized to them. Pastor Phil said he had never seen such a sheepish and remorseful-looking Jesus Imagine his surprise when they insisted that he put his costume back on so that they could have a photo taken with him. Of course we're going to make it a Kodak moment, Pastor Phil said, because we had seen the Lord. That story reminds me of what had happened as the disciples first came to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning. John records Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the beloved disciple all reaching the tomb at different times, peering inside, seeing different things, coming to different conclusions, and being surprised at what they learn. And the first Easter message is not, Christ is risen or death has been defeated, but I have seen the Lord. I think for John, 
seeing something is the best way to really understand it. So for Mary to declare that she has seen the Lord means that she now understands who Jesus is and what he is about. John doesn't say why Mary went to the tomb. It could have been to anoint his body with spices, but it could have just as easily been because she wanted to be near the body of Jesus, the man who had inspired her and given her hope. She travels back and forth that morning, shocked and dismayed that Jesus' tomb has been tampered with, and that starts all of this running back and forth to the tomb. And you know, that's still what we disciples of Jesus do when we think he is missing. We run around a lot, busying ourselves looking for Jesus, but not really getting anywhere. Eventually, it all gets to be too much for Mary, and she breaks down in tears outside that empty tomb. And she sees a couple of angels sitting in the place where Jesus was supposed to be, but she is not all impressed and tells them they have taken the Lord. And in the midst of her grief, she hears another voice. Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Jesus has come back to Mary knowing that she is looking for him. Yet, you see, Jesus was never lost because he knew that she and we are lost without him. This week has been what experts have called the toughest one yet in our nation's fight against COVID-19. Death tolls have increased, and we are all looking for an end to this crisis before the darkness threatens to overwhelm us. I suppose that puts us in good company with Mary, because darkness and emptiness is how Mary's discovery of the risen Christ began. Indeed, I think we are not quite ready to encounter Easter until we've spent some time in a dark and empty place where hope is all but gone, where Easter is the last thing we would expect. But remember, loneliness and despair are not how Mary's story ends. Easter puts a twist on all of the grief that we bear, all of the sorrow that we carry with us throughout this life. As she stands there, she is approached by Jesus himself, and she only recognizes him when he says her name. She doesn't piece together a theological mystery. She doesn't recall how the prophecies in Scripture, like a model Sunday school student, predict this day. She doesn't dazzle anyone with her grasp of the Nicene Creed, she simply hears him speak her name, and she knows that Jesus, her Lord, has returned. She hears the familiar voice of her teacher, and she knows somehow that God must have triumphed over death and the grave. She hears and sees the best news. And because she sees him, she knows that Jesus is Lord of all. Easter is God's appearing first not to the disciples who run the fastest or who believe the quickest, but to the ones who are weeping, the ones who are questioning and stuck in their confusion. Easter is God's surprise that we never know exactly where or when we might bump into Jesus next. But it's probably best to look around the darkest corners of life. In our staying home this Easter, as difficult as it is not to be together for worship, we know that we are saving lives. We are messengers of hope simply by staying home.
And the message we proclaim is a simple one. Death does not have the last word. Grief will not last forever. We have seen the Lord in the gowned up, masked covered faces of our medical professionals. In the gloved hands of grocery store workers. In the strong arms of food bank volunteers and workers who continue to serve those in need in the smiling video calls with family and friends and co-workers. The question Easter asks of us is not, do you believe in the doctrine of the resurrection? Rather, the question is, where have you encountered the risen Christ? That is what Mary's first Easter message I have seen the Lord has done for people. It provides the courage to look death in the eye, to peer into the open tomb, to gather at scenes of tragedy and loss, because we have faith that Jesus, the Lord of life, is out and about among us. We are prepared now to see God Turn over the forces of darkness and evil. That's what seeing and understanding the resurrection of Jesus is all about. The transformation from pain and grief to joy that Mary experiences may not come so quickly for all of us. But joy has come with Easter, and it will come again. Christ is risen and we have faith that those who have cried and those who have died will someday hear him call their name. Indeed, we know how this story, and thanks to it, how our stories end. Mary has seen the Lord, and so will we. So watch out. For indeed, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen.
Let us now affirm what we believe together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of, of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in prayer for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. We thank you for the many witnesses of your grace and love among us, including Jerry and Jane Ingstrom, Ken and Joyce Irvin, Jake, Lindsay, Henry and Harrison Finkbeiner, and Haley and Dustin Ford. Open our ears to hear the good news this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in song. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on you, your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence, including those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day, musicians, preachers, readers, and sound and video engineers who help bring worship to us in new ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, 
We place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In faith, let us now pray the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your sadness into joy. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he has said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.